Hello everyone. In this video, uh, I'm going to be talking about another failure theory, and that is the maximum distortion energy theory. Uh, the max distortion energy theory is another theory for ductile materials, um, and it's basically using uh, this dis distortion energy principle, which is if we looked at how much energy was being absorbed uh, by the molecules within the material and you know their capacity for absorbing that material or that energy, we could predict uh, when they would fail. And obviously we're not going to go into all the details of you know what um, constitutes failure on that molecular level. But the basic principle, uh, if we are to um, look at this theory is that again, if I, draw out an axis system, which is a sigma one, sigma two axes, sigma max, sigma min, and I mark on it where the yield stress would be. And if you recall, when we talked about uh, the max shear stress theory, we basically said there's this polygon inscribed within these points and it looks something like that we call it tresca's polygon and the max distortion energy theory is is very similar uh, but it's it's slightly more precise which is to say the shape now there's probably no way i draw this accurately the shape might look something like that where it's actually An ellipse and being that it's an ellipse um, we can define it pretty easily mathematically uh, and you can kind of see it touches all those same points um, where the yield stress is is crossing the axes uh, but it's it's just giving a little bit more definition to that shape so to evaluate this we calculate what's called the equivalent stress and we're going to call that sigma sub e and this equivalent stress then is equal to sigma 1 squared plus sigma 2 squared minus sigma 1 sigma 2 all under a square root and if you looked at this equation you'd say hey basically that's the equation of an ellipse because it's defining this elliptical shape and this equivalent stress then is what we compare against our yielding criteria to determine whether or not it's safe. So uh, before I talk about that in a tiny bit more depth, I want to mention that we can also write this equation in terms of sigma x and sigma y, you know, if, we, if we're just looking at those stresses as they apply, are applied to a stress element. And we can substitute those in based on the, the math uh, that you know, we've previously looked at when it comes to like more circle and stuff. And the equation ends up looking like this, sigma x squared plus sigma y squared minus sigma x sigma y plus 3 tau xy squared all under a square root. Uh, and that ends up being the same thing. And then the criteria is simply that if this equivalent stress exceeds our yield stress, then we predict that the part will yield. So same general principle to the max shear stress theory uh, in that as long as we're inside the ellipse, everything's good. If we uh, plot our sigma one, sigma two points outside the ellipse, then we're predicting failure. The max shear stress theory is slightly more conservative than the max distortion energy theory. You can see it's it's smaller. The inside area is smaller than the area of the ellipse. Uh, and that means that it's going to predict um, failure more frequently than the max distortion energy theory. So uh, the max distortion energy theory is uh, more accurate. than the max shear stress theory. Uh, but again, Max shear stress theory is more conservative, meaning it'll predict failure more often. Max distortion energy theory, more accurate. 
And that's the basic criteria that we would use then for, for ductile materials. Thanks.